So you seem the share prices of actually both of your companies declined on this news. So investors uh, didn't seem to be buying this merger. How do you convince them that, that, uh, that a merger between Aetna and Humana makes sense for them? Well, I don't think it's all investors, Betty. I actually think it's the ARBs that um, got in the deal looking for opportunity, and I'm not quite sure they know how to do this trade because this is a longer-term strategy. This is a very big combination that's going to have a longer-term impact on the quality of health care, the cost of health care in an evolving consumer marketplace. So I'm not quite sure they know how to play it. It'll settle down and the noise will come out of the system and we'll do just fine. Okay, Bruce, is it going to lower health care costs for consumers? <clears throat> Very much so. I think uh, as you th see the transition from a more employer-based to a consumer-based model and a value-based reimbursement model from a fee-for-service model, these combined organizations will have the capability to, to meet both of those trends, both in the way of our clinical capabilities on the Humana side and the deep, deep employer relationships that Aetna has on, the, on their side. Uh, Mark, is there going to have to be, though, some divestiture of your business or Humana's business in order to pass regulators? Yes, we did an, actually a very detailed review, Betty, of, of, of um, the businesses at a local market level. So this is not statewide, this is not citywide, this is down to the zip code and rating area kind of analysis and we will have to do some divestitures we included those divestitures in the value of the deal in the costs of the deal and um, we still believe they give very healthy returns over time uh, how much i mean what, what kind of chunk of revenue are we talking about that you might have to give uh, up yeah we're we're we're, we're really not uh, broadcasting that number that's subject to a conversation with the department of justice and we don't want to get ahead of ourselves Okay, because there are some estimates already out there, right? Um, uh, you know, Stern Agee came out and said that you might have to give up about 13% of your revenue in order to get this past regulators. I mean, is that way off the mark? I would just say that we're not, um, not going to talk about that at this time. And uh, everybody's doing an analysis at a far, far, a far less detailed level than we have. And, and I think that's where the rubber is really going to hit the road. Uh, in terms of you know the value for investors, you know I understand that 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 we can't say a blanket all shareholders are not happy or you know or are not satisfied perhaps with the deal if you look at the share price. But you know Bruce, you have to look at, at where you know the offer is around 223 uh, for the company. The share price though is about is well below uh, well below that price, about 30 dollars below that. What do you think that's telling uh, telling you? Well, I, I think it's just telling you the uh, where. Uh, Mark was just talking about, and that's the ARBs. I think the ARBs are very confused. They've been hurt over the last few deals with a long um, justice cycle, and I just see that in the stock. I will tell you, the investors that we've talked to, they are very, very excited about the future of the combined companies and will be holders post-deal. So I don't think it's the longer-term investors. I really think there's some confusion out there on the ARB side of how to play this um, particular transaction action considering the the FTC um, uh, review well, is that partly um, you know on you in, ter in terms of the messaging to the investors well I think the messaging is gonna have to I'm not not all investors are the same buddy so I think we're gonna have to let the kind of shareholders who value this deal find their way through it it could be a huge buying opportunity for them for all intents and purposes and so I think we just need to let it clear through we've got a long time between now and when the transaction closes, that's the point at which all of this will be of true value. And so we, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna let the market sort itself out. Uh, and, Mark, why are these deals happening right now? I mean, it seems like uh, you've had, certainly uh, we've seen lots of drug deals, but now we're seeing some health insurance deals. You've got Anthem and Cigna that are at play. Mm -hmm. I mean, why now? Well, I think the big story in all of this is that the business model has to change. We now have doctors on a cash basis, hospitals on a revenue basis, and insurers on a margin basis. It's a wonder the system works at all with three different economic models. To get everybody on the same page, we have to have a fundamentally different level of partnership. It can no longer be smash mouth at the local market. It actually has to be a partnership between payers and providers on making sure that we're getting the right outcome, which is a healthy 
economically productive and happy member. And so mm -hmm. if we look at that as the outcome and we reward the health system for doing that, we're going to start to see trend benders actually make the market more affordable for consumers. Uh, Bruce, do you think, does any of this, though, the timing at least, have something to do with what we heard from the Supreme Court and the affirmation of, uh, of the Affordable Care Act? No, I, I, I truly believe this is a long-term trend. I think uh, the exchanges have brought some motivation to it. But I will tell you, the ACA and, and all the uh, items related to that stimulated these kind of discussions, but wasn't the reason. I, where Mark is going, this transition from a very deep consumer-centric model and a model with value-based reimbursement is really driving the industry from a sick care model mm -hmm. to a health model. And there's technology that needs to be invested in. There's partnerships that have to be created. And size and scale from the ability to ensure it's affordable offers all of that. Uh, and Mark, before we go, I mean, uh, speaking about the timing, uh, it, it, did any did the fact that there are other mergers out there, or other companies in play, and again, I point to a Cigna or an Anthem and their pairing, mm -hmm. did that have anything to do with you wanting to make sure that you and Bruce get together in a room and iron this deal out? No, I think, you know, it, it's very interesting. Um, we've been looking at this kind of combination for five years as a company. I know Bruce and his team have been thinking through over the last few years about how they see the future. And what we knew with all the noise going around was that we had to lock and load on what we thought was best for our customers, best for our shareholders, and best for the people that we serve in the employer community and the provider community. And this was the deal. And so we said, you know, let all the noise rage, let all the rumors amuse people in the marketplace and mm -hmm. keep the news cycle going. We're going to get this deal done and move ahead.